Hey, how's it going? Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this keepsake box, so come check it out. This project is an interesting one for me because it's, I, I built this actually before I started this channel and I, I filmed portions of it, but didn't film all of it. So I'll kind of splice some footage that I have from the build process and then also just kind of get some B-roll of this as well as I, as I go through. This is actually a design from a woodworker named Paul Sellers. Uh, and Paul Sellers has a great website called Woodworking Masterclasses. He also has a great YouTube channel as well, so you can check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. But this was actually a project that he featured on his website that was free. So it had free plans. First step was just kind of watching Paul Sellers' tutorial videos on how to build this. And I gotta say, if you wanna make something like this, you know, you can watch this video and get some ideas, but really go watch the videos that he made because he'll take you through step by step and just show you exactly how to go about things. This project started with the generosity of my old coworker named Don, who knew I was getting into woodworking and he said, hey James, I got this random piece of uh, lumber for you. It was probably about, I wanna say over four feet long, probably about this thick, you know, whatever that is. From this piece of wood, I was looking at the plans for this particular build. I was looking at this piece of wood and like you've seen before on this channel, it was trying to say, how can I get this out of this piece of wood. And it was really one of these things where I was gonna be very close to running out of wood if I didn't use it correctly. And so it was something I had to keep in mind. Another challenge with this as well is if you look at the bottom here, there's a couple holes in the bottom of this project. Uh, this is because the piece of wood that I was using had a whole bunch of different little holes and places where I think it was part of a piece of furniture before. So it was where hardwood would come together. And so I had to try to cut out pieces so that I could avoid those places with the holes and the only place I ended up having to use them was on the very bottom. And I've often thought it would be kind of neat to have some kind of locking mechanism from the drawer uh, making use of these, but that's kind of where it is right now. <laughs> One of the challenges with this project was I wanted to try it with only hand tools and just based on all the work, all the sawing and resawing I had to do, it was just a lot of effort in the hot sun outside. And so I used just some small little saws. So you'll see in the footage, um, I use this saw quite a bit. And this saw is fairly good for ripping stuff. It's not great, but the problem was, especially when ripping pieces that were, you know, this, this long, you get to a point where your saw hits it and you can't go any further. And so that's when this Japanese pole saw came into use, which again, it's, it's not bad, but you can just see the size of the wood compared to the size of the saw. It was just a lot of effort to get through. Uh, all those pieces and then and then once I got through these pieces and I had them kind of you know resawed in, in kind of rough dimension that's when I would take my hand plane and at that time I only had this number four hand plane and I would plane off the the, the paint first of all then I would use my marking knife to kind of measure the width of all these things uh, plane it down to the correct width and just kind of one piece at a time put this all together. So let me show you some of the features of this piece. So it's got the hinged lid, uh, a couple details to keep in mind here. It's got a recessed kind of line around the side here. And uh, that's kind of a neat detail. And what this also does is it allows you to open it up and the back lip, um, the way the hinge sits in here, it keeps the, the lid from falling all the way back. So you can kind of have it resting open. Now, as you look inside at the top, you have a little area to keep different things in. And this is just sitting in here. I can kind of lift this up for us right now. This is just sitting in here, uh, kind of floating, not on a groove, but on actually a couple of supports that were glued in to, uh, that were glued into the frame here. And it's interesting too, I've noticed with the changing seasons, uh, depending on the humidity, this will fit uh, either really tight or kind of more loose, but it kind of just sits right in there as well. The carcass of this has some dovetails in it. So you can see on the side, uh, actually better to see on the front, you have this one beam that goes across the front like this. And then in the back, you have a full kind of piece on the back. So it's kind of a box all the way around the sides and the back, and then just this connecting at the front. That's kind of the carcass of it. 
And then that leaves a space in the bottom here for this drawer. Now this drawer was a lot of fun. It's a full dovetail at the back. And what that means is the dovetail shows through on the back, but it's a, just a half blind dovetail, which means you can't see the dovetails on the front. And this was a lot of fun to practice. This is my first time making a drawer with this feature. Uh, I don't even know if I've ever done one since. So this was fun to do. It was pretty much a big learning experience just to kind of cut those half blinds, but I enjoyed that. And then this was interesting as well. The way that the bottom of the drawer is held in, what actually Paul Sellers has done here is he's designed this little strip that goes all the way around. You can kind of see it on the back as well. And this piece of wood, it's cut at 45 degree angles and kind of just glued to the side. This has this uh, little groove in it, and that's kind of glued in there to hold the bottom piece in place. And then the bottom piece sits floating in that. And the reason we sit floating in the bottom is just for seasonal expansion and contraction, and that's kind of built right in there. Uh, so that's kind of how that goes, and it just kind of sits really nicely. The drawer pull is just a shaped piece of wood, and if you kind of look under on the underside of it, it has a little carving, uh, just something to kind of hold your hands on and pinch as you're pulling the drawer out. Uh, what are some of the things they use this for? Ironically, uh, this actually just sits empty right now, and so I'm trying to think about a way to use this at first, I thought this might be a good place to store. I thought this might be a good place to store chisels or something, you know, kind of open it up and put it in there. And then I just thought to myself, something like this doesn't probably belong in my shop with all the other junk that's in here in the garage. So I brought it into my office at, at work and there's not many things that I kind of have thought of to put in here. Uh, it just kind of sits more ornamental and decorative right now, but that's, that's okay. I think it's, it is what it is. Yeah, I definitely would check out Paul Seller's work on YouTube. He is just an awesome woodworker, an awesome guy. And again, woodworkingmasterclasses.com, I believe it is. You'll see a whole bunch of projects. There's some that are behind the paywall. Um, so you'd have to pay for a membership and you can get all these awesome projects with videos and, and stuff. But there's a lot of stuff actually that's just free with really detailed videos, with drawings and just uh, great instructions. So check that out as well. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Hope you enjoyed that. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to subscribe, that's always appreciated. And until next time, take care.